Hello Flatties and Globe Defenders, it's Critical Think from Down Under. Flat Earthers from the Southern Hemisphere are a very special breed indeed because they have to willfully ignore such blatantly obvious things as the sun is in completely the wrong place. Now there's a Southern Hemisphere dweller that has made a hit piece video on me and I thought it was worthwhile responding to that. Now this particular flatty goes by the name of Heliocentric Suicide, but mate, that's one hell of a mouthful. So I hope you don't mind if I can more affectionately refer to you as just Ducky. The title of his video is Baller Tricks, Removing Perspective, featuring yours truly, Critical Thing. Now I don't know how anyone can remove perspective, but at this stage, I'm all ears. Perspective is a thing that has never changed. There is nothing to keep up to date with perspective. It's well understood and it's an everyday thing present in everything we see and in every photo we take. There are formulas to calculate angular size of something or to calculate the size of something of a given distance and angular size. I use them all the time to demonstrate that the world we live on is indeed a globe. Flat earthers cannot do math or geometry or they don't want to because they fear it will support the globe. Anything which supports the globe must be denied and thrown away or declared the work of the devil. Anyway, I think Ducky means when he says I don't understand perspective is that I am not familiar with his particular method of bastardizing perspective to fit his flat earth narrative. For Flat Earthers, perspective is a wonderful magic wand that can be ordained with many different properties to suit any particular situation, where they may be embarrassed by reality not conforming to their pancake fantasy. As for the claim that I hide perspective, we'll try to work out what he means. Let's start with pointing out how easy it is for Flat Earthers to just say things that are not true not have any evidence to support it, and to even accuse others of the very same behaviour that they themselves will engage in. Let's have a listen to this. Now, Critical Thinker has a way with words where he never actually um, provides any evidence to prove you wrong. All he has is that you are stupid, you don't know what you're talking about, you're a moron, blah, blah, blah. No explanation whatsoever. While it is true that I may have said these things at various times, and they are very well deserved terms, but that isn't all I have or do, and certainly not my opening ambit. I go to a lot of trouble to explain, and I have a mountain of evidence to support my position. In this same video, and Ducky shows this, you will see the very piece of evidence that already proves him wrong. And what about all the other evidence I have? Let's look at a few examples. A ship over the curve. No compression or mirror layer to use as an excuse, and taken quite a few metres above the water. Antonio's horizon drop experiment. Weight change versus latitude gives evidence of a rotating oblate spheroid. The sun rises below eye level. There's a horizon drop in Phuket. Curvature drop in the mountains in Thailand. Sunrise, you know, the sun half obscured by the earth and big. Sunset due west on the equinox. Anti-crepuscular rays at a different location than the last one, just so you need to say that. The horizon drop picture. So you can see that in the very first minute of his video, Ducky has got his facts flat out wrong. What hope do we have for the rest of it? Here's the text conversation we had, and it uh, started out with me saying something. Uh, you can read it yourself later if you want, but uh, basically what it came down to was arguing about the sun, can the sun set or not on a flat earth? And that's when this cyclist got brought into it and uh, Tommy got involved here somehow, but I don't see Tommy anywhere. Uh, maybe he's been blocked from the channel. And uh, I know, see, the first thing that 
Mr. Heliocentric Suicide has said here is, um, as for you and your stupid 3D model. So there he goes. He's calling things stupid. And your model means shit. And um, there's no evidence. He, he provides no evidence, but he, he still uh, makes those derogative statements. And um, yes, the cyclist is not 3,000 miles high, so how can it look like the sun? Uh, height makes no difference, moron. It's just scaling. So um, there's nobody calls anybody a moron, do they? And uh, everybody knows the path of the sun. Um, blah, blah, blah. Nobody knows the exact path, even though there's a flat earth clock app that uh so that's why i said you know why do you think that the other flat earthers that have the flat earth clock app do you think that they're lying but anyway the key difference is the cyclist is not three thousand miles high and um the sun is not cycling across a bridge so i thought this is a lousy analogy in fact i've said it's a stupid analogy and uh, he's also forgotten that the sun is 15 degrees in elevation and 40 degrees to the north. And uh, the cyclist, as he cycles away, is none of those. And um, so again, here we go. That app is an estimate moron. Uh, yeah. And so, but he could never say how much of an estimate it was. He couldn't commit himself to a number and I gave 10 20 percent 10 20 30 percent as examples uh, he's taken that as being oh that's the list you must choose from uh, okay that's fine and um, so I, I offered to scale this up uh, and what I meant by that was draw to scale the um, cyclist on the and and the sun and it didn't meet his expectation so he made this video and uh, another another priceless piece here uh, so there's no name calling on the flat earth side of course and if you can read through that and see where I've called anybody any names good on you and now let's listen to Ducky's analysis of that diagram. I'm expecting the distance to be... Ooh, if you scale the cyclist's head up to where the sun would be, I'd imagine the distance to be massive, huge. And then the observer's height would obviously have to change slightly, so the observer's height would be a little bit bigger as well. And look what you get. Well, is this what you call scaling? It's, there's still 100 meters, yeah? We've still got the cyclist, he hasn't gone further, and all you've done is add a sun. And you've added some some apparent angles. Right? They probably aren't even correct. Okay, so it was not what you expected. And I am not a mind reader, so how was I to know what you expected? But I did draw a scale drawing of the cyclist. You didn't draw anything. I should explain that when you do a scale drawing, it is okay to put the original dimensions on the drawing. This is how building plans are done, for instance. To scale means everything is in the right proportion. So, in this drawing, 100 meters is represented on a scale of approximately 300 to 1. My diagram is to correct scale. It didn't even cross my mind to make the cyclist 3,000 miles or 4,800 kilometers high because that would make the drawing a bit of a joke, as we will soon show. Now, these are not apparent angles. There is no mistaking that they are, in fact, angles. I think you meant to say they are arbitrary angles and you claim that they are probably wrong. However, I do notice that you provide zero evidence, as usual, of your claim. You don't even try to work it out. The angles are to scale. 
I did not draw the distance to the sun because the diagram would not function very well when you consider the enormous distance to the sun compared to the cyclist. 16,700 kilometers to the sun to 100 meters to the cyclist would not work on that diagram. You would not even see the cyclist. So I drew this to scale showing the angular sizes. Even though the sun is 16,700 kilometers away at sunset, it's still 4,800 kilometers high, so it's still at an angular distance from the horizon of 15 degrees. And this is a point that flat earthers don't understand. The point I am making here, and one which you missed entirely, is that the angular size of the distance between the cyclist head and the ground is about 1.2 degrees in this scenario, and for the sun, it is 15 degrees. It's not a good analogy, because the angular size will never match, even if we do what you want and enlarge the cyclist to 3,000 miles high. You say I cannot scale. Yet, you allow this guy to produce this diagram that is grossly off scale and you think this is okay? Why are you not making a video about this and calling this person all kinds of names? I mean, that's a joke, really. Where is your honesty and integrity, Ducky? You are hereby officially called out. I want to see you say that this diagram is ridiculous. Now I'm going to show you how I calculated the angles, which you say were probably wrong in your view. So in the original drawing, which I quickly threw together, I examined the angles when the cyclist was 100 metres away. So if we take the cyclist's head as about 2 metres off the ground, due to perspective, the angular size of the head to the ground is 1.15 degrees, or rounded up, 1.2 degrees. This is the number I've got on my diagram. It's not wrong. Now, at sunset, we have a sun that is 9,000 nautical miles away, which I will convert to 16,700 kilometers. I have taken the sun height at 3,000 miles or 4,800 kilometers, which is the smallest value I could find that is consistent with the flat Earth. You can see then that at sunset, due to perspective, the angular distance from the sun to the ground is 15 degrees in this scenario. This is why the cyclist's head is not a good analogy. Remember, the angle to the cyclist's head is 1.2 degrees, and to the sun it is 15 degrees. Not even close. Okay, let's enlarge the cyclist so that his head is 4,800 kilometers high, just like Ducky wants. No, no, I am not going to increase the observer height because the observer remains the same size close to the ground and doesn't magically transform into Gigantor. Only the cyclist will be enlarged so that his head is as high as the flat earth sun. To make this comparison a little more accurate, I took the cyclist just as his head was about to set, which is 650 meters away. Now here's the cyclist going off down the bridge. And here is the cyclist just as he's about to turn the corner and disappear out of sight even though his head is not quite yet set. But this distance is 650 metres. Now, in this case, the angle between the cyclist's head and the ground, the angular size, is 0 0.176 degrees. So it's very close to what you would call the horizon in this case. Now, if we scale that up, so enlarge the cyclist, that's 4,800 kilometers high at 0 0.176 degrees, 
and the cyclist needs to be 1,560,000 kilometers away to obtain that degree. So that 0 0.176 degree. So it's easy to see that that is an enormous distance. Even at that distance, the cyclist's head is still not yet set. 1,560,000 kilometers. And the sun's only 16,700 kilometers and it's still 15 degrees in the sky. That's how it works. The sun cannot set. We've enlarged the cyclist up to 4,800 kilometers high and he has to be 1,560,000 kilometers away to get his head anywhere near the horizon. The sun is not that far away. It doesn't work on a flat earth. And here's the diagram. It's two scale. The cyclist, he's 4,800 kilometers high and he's 1,560,000 kilometers away. And the angle to that cyclist is 0.176 degrees. And the sun is very close compared to that. It's 16,700 kilometers away. And the same height and the angle to that sun is 15 degrees. How can it possibly set? Well, that'll be the end of part one. And we'll see you soon for the continuation of this story in part two. So stay tuned.